Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to sp uh, speak about emoji programming language. Uh, my name is Sub, and uh, I am a mobile developer at SP Digital. I'm also the organizer of iOS conference in Singapore. Um, I started the iOS meetup group uh, in Singapore six years ago. Um, the one in the middle is iOS Cosmos. It's kind of a uh, readme um, file or GitHub repo where you can find all the information that you need about iOS development, starting from um, design to um, CI and testing, all the tools that you need to know. Uh, so why, why am I talking about uh, an emoji programming language? So this was tweeted by Tim Cook earlier this year when he announced that uh, well, uh, we are going to introduce few new emojis this year, and uh, he called it World <laughs> Emoji Day. And this came up a uh, <laughs> few months ago when somebody posted, oh, why there is a difference between the hamburger uh, emoji um, in Apple platform and Google platform. And then this tweet uh, came up and uh, followed that, which is like he said, I'll drop everything and make sure this is done really well. Now, as you can see, uh, the CEOs of top companies, they are really serious about emojis. So uh, better you should be as well. Uh, but surprisingly, we had a lot more options. <laughs> <laughs> this was just not a war between Apple or Google anymore. It was like everybody were um, uh, creative in their own way, and uh, they were uh, trying to communicate with the users in a different way, right? And then uh, Apple came up with this um, earlier this year as well. It's like live emojis, as they call it, or uh, you can use the iPhone platform to be more expressive uh, with the emojis. And uh, some of us were trying to kind of uh, make use that platform and um, be more creative with it. Now, a little bit of history lesson here. Uh, we have been communicating through a lot of different medium, uh, starting from Fijian to you know, telephone, newspaper, internet, um, then the social media happened. WeChat first came up with this concept of communicating with stickers, right? We see started seeing um, the cat, um, stickers and then we had this kind of apps which is like yo you just all you do is click on uh, a friend's name and it says yo <coughs> and then we had like snapchat filters so my point is uh, basically with emojis you can be more um, expressive you can uh, communicate or rather, it's, it's kind of a different way to communicate with each other, and for programmers, we communicate through our code. So it's like, let's see whether it's possible to even um, write a full-fledged uh, uh, program using just emojis. So I came across this, um, um, this, this site when I was actually preparing for my talk, and it's like, there is actually an emoji programming language it's called emojicode.org. Let's see how the syntax looks like. So if you see the bottom part, that's where uh, the code is running. Your program starts with this cross flag. Um, then the block starts with the grapefruit and ends with the watermelon. Anything, <laughs> anything within ABC is actually string literal. And as you can guess, the smiley is what it prints the string. So, a little bit more complex example. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. The first line, the well, is actually an extension of the string class. <laughs> The second one, the pig, 
is actually a method definition, and the pig head is the method name. <laughs> it returns a string. Now, as you can see, there is a knife. It has to do something with slicing, right? So what it does, it takes the current string, uh, slices it from a character to a character. Now the dog is equivalent to this or self. It's like this string, or you can imagine it as this or self. Now what is that frozen ice cream cone? This is a frozen variable, which means you cannot change the variable. <laughs> it's similar to constant. The last line, OK, so the second line, is it, it does the rest of the string. The last line, what it does is um, it's a string concatenation. And um, it takes the rest of the string, the first letter, and uh, concatenates with A, Y. And the, the way you concatenate is using cookies. And as you can imagine, uh, the red apple is um, something that returns uh, the string from this method. And if you run this program, this is what you get. Now look at the strings. Uh, you have cat, so you um, get the rest of the string is AT, and the first letter is C, and then you concatenate it with AY, and similarly the other strings. Now, let's see it in action. So this is how you compile the code, uh, and um, you run the uh, program using emoji code, and it prints the output. Now, they have gone really you know, advanced. They have things like generics and protocols in emojis. <laughs> uh, they have closures as well. Um, and they have this is a full-fledged programming language. This is all cool, right? But then the thing is, how do I create my own programming language? Or how do I even start to create something like this? Well, this is very simple. For something like an emoji programming language, all you need is just emojis, <laughs> right? You just need to find the right emoji and decide how to communicate um, and write, you know, write a full-fledged program. But let's see some of the programming languages. We have seen a lot, a lot of programming languages in the last decade or so. These are just some of the examples. Now, one thing if you notice here on the screen, uh, some of the uh, modern programming languages are here, like Swift or Kotlin. Um, we have uh, some of the old guys here, like C, C++. Um, the thing is that all these languages are different. They serve a different purpose. Some are static, some are dynamic language. Uh, some are interpreted language and some are compiled language. Some of them are object-oriented and some are procedural. Some are low-level and some are high-level. So how do you basically start um, when you uh, write your own programming language? The thing is, irrespective of what kind of language uh, you write, the fundamentals are somewhat similar. There will be some differences in the steps. You execute these things, but the fundamentals are somewhat similar. So. You have, for an interpreter language, you have something like this. Um, you have a lexer, you have a parser, and you have an interpreter. Uh, the lexer provides tokens, and the parser gives you an abstract syntax tree. Um, let me show you in code so that you can visualize it a little bit uh, better. So let's say you have your code, which is you're just printing high. The lexer will take that. And it will identify what are the different tokens it has, or what are the different words it has that it can, um, it can identify. So it's like print is an identifier, and um, the, um, the character high is a string. So all the lexer does is it uh, identifies these uh, words. And it creates something called tokens. Now parser takes these uh, tokens and creates in something called nodes, so basically, this is somewhat similar or closer to your programming language. And the interpreter evaluates those nodes. And in the runtime, you will see your output. Uh, let's see Lexer a little bit into detail. As I mentioned, it converts your code into tokens. 
um, now imagine your program is a bunch of sentences. Now these tokens will be the words in the sentences. And the lexer is basically is extracting um, those tokens. And it tags them with a particular type. Let's see an example. Let's say I have a print statement which is like I add 20 pictures and I, what will the lecture do? It will take this. <laughs> it's like you don't eat 20 pizzas, right? That is true. So it's basically it's going to generate the tokens. It will uh, identify different things which are meaningful. It's like print, um, I add, which is a string, 20 is a number, and pizzas is an identifier. Now, how, how does a lexer, uh do uh, something like this? How does it identify these things? So one of the ways Lexus um, uh, kind of generate these tokens are using um, regular expressions. So it's basically here we have a bunch of rules, like we, we are trying to identify white spaces, we are trying to identify literals, we are um, uh, checking for some keywords. And uh, the uh, text on the right hand side is basically what uh, those tokens are. For a programming language like Python, where you don't have um, open or closed curly braces, um, you basically uh, write a code block using indentation. The lexer would identify this indentation and de-indentation um, and generate uh, respective tokens for that. Now let's look into parsers. So as I mentioned, parser is basically it will on its own, the tokens doesn't mean anything. The parser will contextualize these tokens and it will generally organize them in a tree structure and it will produce a bunch of nodes. Now, coming back to the same example, it will generate something like this, which basically tells that, okay, I need to call something called print with arguments uh, of these particular types. And if you want to kind of visualize this, you will have, let's say you have a node called print, then it takes a bunch of arguments like string, number, and locales, um, and it, it will basically uh, generate these nodes. The final step is for interpreter. It's basically, again, let's say your code is something like this. It will token, the, the lexer will uh, tokenize. The parser will generate the nodes the interpreter will evaluate uh, those nodes. Now for a compiled language, that thing gets replaced by a compiler or a VM, and then it will generate bytecode, which is uh, somewhat faster uh, because it's closer to your um, um, machine level language. So let's see some uh, demo. Is that terminal with you? That's okay. So let's create a brand new programming language. So this is going to ask me uh, for my language name. I'm calling it Moji. I'll ask for the file extension. Let me give it MJ. And that's it, I just created a programming language. <laughs> I have uh, a, a binary called Moji, um, which is what I'll be using to generate some of the things. But let's see what it uh, generated. As I discussed, we, 
it, it has to have a lexer and it has to have a parser. So I have a bunch of uh, keywords defined. This is basically class, definition, if, else, and then try, catch, and all those things. Um, and then I have some of the tests um, here. It is like, okay, this is method. Let's say I want <coughs> to have another um, keyword, which is basically smiley, and I'm going to define my methods or start my methods in, uh, using smiley instead of diff, right? How do I start that? So all I need to do is uh, smiley is going to be similar to diff. So I'm just going to use this. So that's all I need to do in the lecture. In the parser, I just need to implement it. I'll find the method for this is the method definition. I'm going to create a smiley definition. And the node type will be smiley definition node. And for the implementation, And then I need to create a node. <coughs> so it's Java. This node basically extends the class, the base class node. It has name, body, as you would expect for a uh, method. So with this, I'm going to build again. going to take a while. So while it's building, let me write another test file. Let's call it smiley.mj. And I'm just going to use the same thing. Instead of def, I'm just going to use smiley. Let me see. So it worked as it's like we expected. So instead of uh, def, now we have a keyword smiley, which is basically working exactly as uh, a def for methods. Now let's do something something else. Um, what I want to do is now, um, I want to create uh, or add a method name for the string class. So we have some methods here uh, for strings, which are just like uh, for concatenation. You'll get size, you know, you'll get sub substring of a string. Now let's uh, add a method called happy. And all I'm going to do is I'm not really interested in what I'm passing here. All I'm going to do here is I am just going to put few of this here. So uh, with this, let's see what happens.
Okay. So with minus e often in, in this language, I can just um, print my output uh, in the terminal, so I don't need to create any program. So because it's a method on string, uh, I need to pass any string. And that's what I all need to do, and then it basically uh, prints um, this character that I, I did. But these are just very simple implementation. You can go a lot more, and you can do a lot more. Um, creating a programming language is basically uh, it's a lot of work. Um, th this is a toy programming language, just trying to understand the fundamentals of. Uh, uh, how to create a programming language. But if you want to create a full fledged production ready programming language, you need to be ready to uh, spend years of work uh, and uh, usually uh, unappreciated work unless you become really successful. Um, a lot of frustration. I need to dedicate a lot of time. Uh, so how do you start? Um, LLVM is an open source compiler um, tool, a bunch of tools basically. There is this Git book called uh, Implementing a Language, um, which basically um, takes you through a toy programming language, uh, and you can implement that. Or you can read some of the books. Um, so usually you need to understand a little bit about the compiler programming. Um, if you are not really familiar with C or C++, and you want to uh, play with uh, something similar to Ruby, or um, then the book on extreme right at the bottom, how to create your own freaking awesome programming language, that's the one you should read. Um, and then you should gi just give it a try. That's it from my side. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? You created a new token called Smiley. But the token was S M I L Y, not <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. No, so I I wanted to create using just emojis, but with this particular tool, uh, it was not parsing the emoji characters properly. Okay. So yeah. Anyone else? Any more questions about tool? Yeah, I have a question actually. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, any uh, plans to make itself hosting? Emoji, a compiler, even emoji? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure, man. I mean, if you see the syntax are fun to look into, but you can't really code in those languages. You need to, it's not really, it, it doesn't come to you automatically. It's, it's just something that you can try for fun and understand the, the, the concepts of Com how compilers work, um, but it's not something that's going, that will go mainstream. You can't build your apps using this, this thing. So. Okay. 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 So thank you so. Thank you. Okay. So, uh